So there's plenty of discussion in the lifting world about fake natties. So what is a fake natty? My definition of a fake natty is someone who claims natural when it's unnecessary to do so, and when questions about drug use can easily be avoided. For example, I wouldn't consider Lasha to be a fake natty, even though he competes in drug-tested competitions. On paper, he's claiming to be natural, but he's not going out of his way to claim natural to give this false message to people that elite weightlifters are natural. That's Wada's fault and weightlifting's fault, not Lasha's fault. As another example, Peros Dimas went out of his way to claim natural when it was unnecessary to do so. He worked with Wada and condemned drug users, two actions that were completely unnecessary to maintain his medal count. If an elite weightlifter or athlete was interviewed and pressured into claiming natural, I wouldn't really consider them to be fake naturals. It really depends on the circumstance, but most professional athletes that are enhanced should find a way to avoid the discussion of drug use. All right, very good. No juicing going on, right? That, that old days in the past, you know, well, we're, that, that doesn't happen anymore in this, in this Only industry. with oranges. Only with oranges, <laughs> okay. Right. In the bodybuilding world, people have come up with methods to spot fake naturals, such as looking at FFMI, levels of muscle fullness while stage lean, looking at upper chest, delts, and trap development, looking out for side effects from gear use, and finally, looking at people's nipples. These side effects could have easily been avoided if they checked their hormone levels with a service from today's sponsor, Let's Get Checked. A high percentage of men suffer from low testosterone. Hormonal imbalances are becoming commonplace as leading concerns in modern healthcare. So if you're concerned about your health and performance in the gym, then it might be useful to order a male hormone test. It's also good to know Let's Get Checked is confidential. All you have to do is order a test, take a sample at home, send it back and receive your results online. With the code CLARENCE25 at checkout, you can receive 25% off. This code will work on every test on the website. Just click the link in the description or pinned comment below. So looking at muscular development can be useful for bodybuilders, but there are world-class weightlifters and powerlifters who don't even look like they lift. This is because the focus of these sports is not on muscular development, but rather on performance. So since it's based on performance, we can then come up with methods to determine if a strength athlete is enhanced. So number one is the personality and beliefs of the athlete. First, you have to evaluate the person's psychology and motivation by asking these questions. Does the person appear to be someone who's willing to do anything to become the best? Has the person been caught lying in the past? What's their opinion on anti-doping? What kind of people do they associate with? What has their reaction been to the state of weightlifting? Are they genuinely angry at people who use drugs in sports? And do they believe PEDs should be illegal? Another thing is where the lifter is from. Culture can form strong beliefs. If the lifter is from a Western country, then typically that culture is against drug use in sports. The reasons for this can be a topic itself, but someone who grows up in America and associates with people strongly against PEDs is more likely to never use drugs versus a lifter who grew up in the Chinese system. There are limitations, of course, like you would need to know the lifter personally. However, you can get a good sense of someone's personality based on interviews and social media posts. For example, I don't know Sarah Davies personally, but I can get a sense she's someone who has strong beliefs and is for anti-doping and is adamantly against drug use. 
This is based on her reaction to the state of weightlifting thing and the fact that she was a chairperson for the IWF. Now, many of you would say that this is a lie to try to convince everyone she's natural. This is a possibility, but I think it's a small possibility because if that were the case, I don't see how she'd benefit. If she was enhanced and getting away with drug testing now, then her competition results would be the same regardless. The only benefit to lying would be that her performance would subjectively be more impressive. I don't think she benefits much financially from claiming natural. She could probably make the same amount of money if she never talked about anti-doping. Another example is Tom, I don't know how to pronounce that, who is a Belgian weightlifter who used to compete in the 56 kilo category, who is a strong supporter of anti-doping and has shown anger towards those who use PEDs. He'd have to be some narcissist to actually be a fake natural, since him claiming natural doesn't give him much benefit. He isn't selling his brand like fake natties in bodybuilding. So if you believe someone is just straight up lying, you have to ask yourself how do they benefit? Mike O'Tren benefits financially from claiming natural. Of course, you get liars who lie to stroke their own ego or for minimal benefit. The motivation of these fake natties is a lot of the time questionable. Of course, you can criticize this method and say it's ridiculous to judge if someone is natty based on their personality and the culture they grew up in. The thing is, drug testing isn't a very effective method for proving someone is natural. So this can be a good subjective method at proving if someone's natural. So the second way is looking at performance. Many of you have probably read the old and controversial article written by Greg Knuckles. The key point in the article is that PEDs increase relative strength performance by around 10%. So when comparing Sinclair points or dots between natural and enhanced lifters, the difference would be around 10%. Of course, there are many criticisms to this claim. It could be the case that PEDs increase lifting performance by more than 10%. It could be up to 15%. Also, you could assume athletes that are more frequently drug tested are limited by the amount they can use. So their lifting performance could only be increased by 5%. But let's just assume that PEDs improve lifting performance by at least 10%. How can we use this to determine if someone is natural? The first step is to find a lifter who claims natural, then look at their results, then add 10% onto each of their lifts and ask if that performance is humanly possible. If their best lifts plus 10% is far beyond what the best lifters have lifted in the past, then it's likely the person is using PEDs. Again, let's use Perostimas as an example. His best results in competition are 180 kilos in the snatch and 215 kilos in the clean and jerk at a body weight of 85 kilos. Keep in mind that these are not his best in training. It could be far higher than these numbers. So this method is being very generous. If we add 10% onto his performance, then his results would be 198 kilos in the snatch and 236 kilos in the clean jerk. These numbers at that body weight are far beyond what has been achieved in any era in weightlifting. In other words, if he was truly natural and decided to use PEDs, his snatch would be close to 200 kilos. This is close to impossible at a body weight of 85 kilos. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Let's Get Checked, which really helps out the channel. So if you're interested in getting your health checked, use the code Clarence25 at checkout. Link is in the description and on the pinned comment.